You Ian's name made me freeze with just one response. Want it all. Quite challenging, though. Part Jimin, a calm young man, replied, Money is not the issue. You understand my spending level. Yu An immediately clarified. You misunderstood. It's not about money, but both have already been claimed by someone else. Surprised by this answer, Part Jimin inquired, Claimed? By whom? That's quite audacious. Yu An gestured to the side and said, It's Chairman Bakyun. Look over there. He's the heir of the Jung conglomerate, the wealthiest family in the country. Jung Hare reserved the remaining two cars last year, intending to gift them to his younger sister. The Jung conglomerate, a former hegeman, dominates the entire nation. And now I cross paths with them over a car. Chairman Bakyun, please wait. I have another luxury car in my place. I'll choose the same one as you. Unexpectedly, Park Jimin witnessed an unusual sight seeing Jung Hare continuing his conversation with Yang Widbai. Hello, miss. I'm from the Jung family. Would you honor me by adding your wet chat to get acquainted? I know it's quite abrupt, but you look remarkably similar to a friend of mine who passed away due to illness many years ago. It's my biggest regret in life. Meeting you years later feels like encountering my friend again. Feel free to block me. I just hope to make up for the remorse. Yang Widbai hesitated awkwardly. Sorry for that. She noticed part Jimin. Part Jimin. Yang Weibai thought to herself, his gaze is so cold, as if he's transformed into someone else. Why did I even consider adding this person? What gives him the right to look at me like that? It's fine if he's playful, but if I do the same, it's like being a thief. Based on what? Well, at most, adding wet chat without talking. It might make Part Jimin feel threatened. After contemplating, Yang Weibai intentionally provoked Part Jimin and responded to Zhang Er. Sure, you said it. Let's add each other on WeChat. She looked back but didn't see Part Jimin. Oh, where's Part Jimin? Is what I did right or wrong? Why do I feel a sense of bitterness? You I and asked Part Jimin, Chairman Bakyun, do you know that girl? Did you know her before, or is it a recent acquaintance? Hearing this, you I and intervened and asked, You I and Jung Hare's car? I'll cover it. One billion. Is that enough? Even though the price to buy those two additional cars is sky-high, Yu Ah-in will definitely agree. However, Park Jimin remains nonchalant and says, Yu Ah-in, I know you always uphold integrity in your business. If you find it too troublesome, consider that I never said anything. As Park Jimin speaks, a look of disappointment and sadness appears on his face. In his heart, Yang Weibai has always been the woman with a certain position, a memorable first love. Even after so many years, his feelings for her have never faded. However, today marks the end of everything. Initially, Park Jimin had no intention of buying those cars. But because Yang Weibai easily added the wet chat of Jung's young master, he decided to make both of them look good this time. Then, bid farewell to Yang Weibai. Hearing Park Jimin, quote, one billion, Yu Ah-in's legs and hands tremble, unable to stand firm. Despite not wanting to offend President Jung earlier, it seems he's reconsidering now. A business deal this lucrative, even in his dreams, you ah in wouldn't dare to think about. Money in hand is not to be left untouched. You ah in is no longer concerned about whether he'll lose President Jung's favor. He didn't bother to care as he stepped forward, draping his arm over part Jimin's shoulder, cheerfully saying, no trouble at all, absolutely no trouble. What's a billion to young Master Jung? Park Jimin had already anticipated Yu Ah In's agreement, so his expression showed no surprise. The young man looked at Yu Ah In intently and added, Of course, I talk straight to the point. Despite the outwardly cheerful demeanor with Park Jimin, with his experience, Yu Ah In soon realized why the young man had thrown out such a sky high price. Along with what he witnessed earlier, Yu Ah In saw Park Jimin's gaze towards Yang Widbai and silently affirmed to himself, Seems like it's a jealousy competition over a woman, offending young Master Jung for not making 800 million. Only a fool would do such a thing. In Yu Ah-in's mind, the only thing at this moment is the lucrative deal in front of him. Young Master Jung is of no importance. Originally planning to greet President Jung and his sister a bit, Yu Ah-in has now disregarded them to accompany Park Jimin in settling the payment for the cars. He mutters to himself as he walks. Sorry. Young Master Jung, in my place, 
I'm not worth 800 million. Part Jimin enters the room and begins to use his black power card to pay for the luxury cars. After completing the payment, the young man casually sits cross-legged, sipping tea, while the money swiftly transfers into Yu Ah-in's account. He raises his teacup, inviting Part Jimin, and nods, saying, All right, the money has been transferred. Let's cooperate happily, President Bakyun. Do you have any other distributions? After deciding to buy all of young Master Jung's cards, Park Jimin also has another thought in mind. He wants Yang Wibai to leave with a heavy heart. Park Jimin hits to Yu Ah-in, asking for his help in a matter. I really need your assistance. Soon, I want to organize activities at the car exhibition hall. Even though Yu Ah-in knew that everything Park Jimin did today was related to relationships, he still couldn't guess what was in Park Jimin's mind. Hearing the young man, Yu Ah-in asks in surprise, Organize activities. What kind? Outside, Yang Wibai scans the surroundings looking for Part Jimin, but doesn't see him. She feels a bit uneasy in her heart, wondering, where did Part Jimin run off to? While searching for Part Jimin, Yang Wibai unexpectedly sees a piano being wheeled in front of her. Everyone at the car exhibition was curious, gathering around to see what event was about to unfold. Yang Wei felt a bit perplexed and stared intently at the piano, muttering, this is a musical performance, but who plays the piano at a car show? As more people became intrigued by the piano, a man exclaimed, Where did this come from? Is it a special program? Young people, too, were drawn to the piano as it was brought out, discussing amongst themselves, Is this from some manufacturer's press conference? Robert. The murmurs and discussions grew louder, with people wondering, I wonder what's going on. Emerging from a white haze, Part Jimin stepped forward and approached the piano. The young man didn't utter a word but conveyed his emotions through each keystroke. Witnessing this, Yang Wei felt a sense of unease and thought to herself, Part Jimin, what are you trying to do, playing the piano? I've never heard a song played by Part Jimin, but the sound of this piano. Yang Wei suddenly realized the emotions embedded in Part Jimin's piano playing, so melancholic that she was momentarily captivated. But her tears had already fallen. Yang Gui quickly wiped away the two streams of tears rolling down her cheeks. She cried uncontrollably, like a child who had just lost their candy, saying, This piano sound is just too sad. Park Jimin poured his soul into each keystroke. He closed his eyes, playing the piano with the spirit of a man going through heartbreak, about to part ways with his girlfriend. His hands gently glided over each curve of the keys, causing the listener's hearts to ache. Anyone who had experienced an unrequited first love while listening to Part Jimin's music couldn't hold back their tears. Someone sobbed and exclaimed, The piano sound is so beautiful. It reminds me of my first love. Another person said, I think I saw my late grandfather. Who is this guy and why, when I hear his piano, can't I help but shed tears? In that crowd, Kim Jusu and Park Min Young were also present. Kim Jisoo sensed that Park Jimin's mood today was not very good. Park Min Young glanced in Yang Weibai's direction and murmured, Is it because of what happened with Yang Weibai earlier? Earlier, when she saw Jung approaching Yang Weibai to talk, Park Min Young had sensed Park Jimin's mood today, which was directed towards Yang Weibai. She thought to herself, Park Jimin's piano is filled with melancholy, sadness, and disappointment. All the guests at the car exhibition seem to be led into another world where only the emotional nuances of relationships existed. As for Yang Weibai, she felt lost, overwhelmed by the emotions that Park Jimin was expressing through his piano, memories of the two of them slowly appearing and quickly fading away. Park Jimin continued playing the entire song. At this moment, Yang Weibai approached, and Park Jimin gently spoke a few words to her. Loving someone means letting her be free. Even if I ache all over, Yang would buy. You're free now. After that, Park Jimin turned and walked away. At this point, Yang Wei Bai felt she was wrong and tears fell. Park Jimin, don't go, I was wrong. Don't leave me alone. After saying the necessary words, Park Jimin simply walked away, leaving Yang Wei Bai standing there with a deep sense of regret. Yang Wei Bai shouted Park Jimin's name. Park Jimin, please don't go. However, no matter how loudly she called, Park Jimin seemed indifferent. He continued walking away without looking back even once. 
As Yang Wibai was about to chase after him, a sudden appearance of a staff member carrying a file interrupted her. Please stop, are you Yang Wibai? The staff member glanced at Yang Wibai with inquisitive eyes before continuing. Yes, I am. What's the matter? Yang Wibi replied. The staff member opened the file and handed her a document, saying, Earlier, Chairman Bakyun purchased the most expensive Lamborghini poison for you. This is the purchase contract. Please verify. Yang Wibai stood frozen for a few seconds upon hearing this, carefully examining the contract. Indeed, it was as described. The paper was a contract for the purchase of the car. Just moments ago, Park Jimin had said his farewell to her. Now, with the delivery of the purchase contract, Yang Wibai couldn't believe her eyes and asked the staff member again, Did Park Jimin buy this car for me? In her heart, a thought emerged. Could it be that he came here to buy a gift for me? The staff member confirmed. Yes, that's correct. With admiration in their voice, they added, Chairman Bakyun chose the most expensive one with just a glance, showing generosity and sincerity. Following that, Yang Wibai followed the staff member to the room for the contract and vehicle collection, her mind in turmoil. At this moment, what she regretted the most was accepting the Wechat contact from that Jung Yum master. Yang Wibai's tears involuntarily fell, and she blamed herself. He treated me unconditionally well. And, what have I done? She felt a chilling shiver as if entering an icy space where Park Jimin's presence lingered everywhere. She realized in shock, and for a petty quarrel, I've damaged the trust he had in me. Despite her efforts, she couldn't contain her emotions. Yang Wibai sat on the floor, holding her face and crying loudly, Boo-boo, Park Jimin. Seeing Yang Wibai in such pain, Kim Jisoo and Park Min Young approached to console her. Sister Yang, don't cry anymore. Calm down, that's right, don't cry anymore. Just as the staff member was looking for Kim Jisoo and Park Min Young, the two arrived at the scene. Oh, there's also Miss Kim and Miss Park. Chairman Bakyun also bought each of you a luxury car worth millions. Here are the purchase contracts. Upon hearing this, Kim Jisoo stood frozen, while Park Min Young bowed her head in contemplation. The two girls turned to look at Yang Wibai and understood why Park Jimin had acted the way he did today. Park Min Young affirmed, It seems that Park Jimin knew early on, we've become involved in a series of events. Kim Jisoo nodded in agreement. Exactly. But even so, he doesn't hesitate for us, spending for our sake. It was only at this moment that all three girls truly grasped Park Jimin's heartfelt gestures towards each of them. He sees through yet remains silent, carefully maintaining a balance in our relationships. Despite being flirtatious, he genuinely treats each of us. By now, the three girls no longer blamed Park Jimin for his flirtatious nature. Instead, they were deeply moved by his genuine feelings. Kim Jisoo was emotional as she spoke about Park Jimin. He's always like that, silently sacrificing for others without expecting anything in return. Park Min Young was equally touched, recalling their first meeting with Park Jimin. Despite her constant suspicion and unjust accusations, he never abandoned her. Park Min Young lowered her head her eyes filled with sadness. He's always trustworthy. Even though I always misunderstood him, he still protected me. Yang Wibai wiped away tears gently, expressing through sobs. Park Jimin is kind-hearted, and I collaborated to deceive his money just because of societal pressure. I am truly foolish. The admiration of all three girls increased further. Their current admiration scores were equal, all reaching 99 points. Kim Jisoo, Park Min Young, and Yang Wibai each had different emotions at this moment, but all shared the commonality of being moved by what Park Jimin had done for them. After settling things with Yang Wibai, Park Jimin quickly left in his car. The vehicle sped down the road, and the young man's mind was filled with various emotions. However, these emotions leaned towards financial gains rather than thoughts of relationships. Park Jimin smiled to himself, almost reaching 100 points, not wasting this billion. The young man felt excited about nearing the 100-point mark, wondering what rewards the system would grant him upon reaching this milestone. Transitioning to Havert University, the young man received a text message while walking, Part Jimin, I was wrong. Can you forgive me? Part Jimin promptly replied, Let's both calm down. Right now, I just want some time alone. Let's give each other more time. He thought to himself, Let her be for a few days. 
Otherwise, she might genuinely believe I have unclear principles and can't cater to women too much. Lost in his thoughts, he suddenly heard a call from behind. Park Jimin, it's really you. Startled, he turned to look back, a girl waving at him. From a distance, I felt it was you. And indeed, it's you. It's been a while, Jimin. After looking at the girl's face and her alluring figure, the young man slowly remembered, Kim Jenny. Why do I feel she's a bit different today? Surprisingly, Kim Jenny ran up, grabbed Park Jimin's hand, and pulled him along, saying, Park Jimin, come with me, I'll show you something. The young man was taken aback, sure, where are we going? Don't ask, just follow me. In his mind, the young man wondered, what is she planning to do? Is she trying to get me to buy some designer bag she fancies? My girls, they only remember me when they're short on money. Let's see what she'll try to sell from her purse this time. Kim Jenny led Park Jimin from the sculpture park, heading towards an apartment. Curious, Park Jimin asked, What do you finally want to do? Kim Jenny replied promptly, Mr. Park Jimin, hold on, I've prepared a surprise gift for you. Kim Jenny quickly opened the door and entered the apartment, saying, Take a look at this. Inside the apartment, every wall was adorned with paintings, featuring Park Jimin as the central figure. The young man was utterly surprised. All of this, you painted all of them. Blushing, Kim Jenny replied, Yes, indeed. I just bought this apartment and the living room felt a bit empty, so I decided to hang up some of my sketch paintings. The young man laughed heartily in praise, Very beautiful. So these are the unexpected gifts you prepared for me. Kim Jenny, with a tomato red face, denied, No, not at all. I painted these just for the joy of it. Then, Summoning her courage, she declared, This house is the real gift I've prepared for you. Upon hearing this, Park Jimin stood still in utter surprise. Usually he was the one actively gifting cars and houses. But today, a girl was taking the initiative to give him a valuable gift. This house, I want to say that I'm giving this house to you. Yes, last time, you lent me money, and you even helped my father teach those debt collectors a lesson. Thanks to you. My father may never gamble again. Our family has overcome difficulties, and things are starting to improve. As our family situation got better, I started reflecting on myself. I used to be too extravagant, too selfish. Merely a girl chasing after money. Part Jimin, not liking me is entirely normal. Listening to these sincere confessions left Part Jimin at a loss for words, and he could only respond with a silent ellipsis. Kim Jenny raised her hand cheerfully and said, I want to become a girl worthy of you. Then once again pursue you, Park Jimin. Upon hearing Kim Jenny's offer of a house and her active pursuit, Park Jimin felt somewhat shocked and incredulous. Is this still the same Kim Jenny, the mining girl? How can she just give me a house like that? The young man hesitated and said, Although you're pursuing me, directly giving a house seems a bit too precious. Kim Jenny calmly replied, You lent me five million before. And this house is just over three million. I've checked. I asked your roommate Lee Min Ho, and he said you always come home late, and there's no accommodation outside the campus. So I bought this house. For you, this house may not mean much, but it's the limit of what I can repay. Hearing these words, Park Jimin thought to himself. So that's it. No wonder Kim Jenny hasn't been in touch lately. Turns out she's been waiting to play her big move. Among the girls tied down. Kim Jenny has the worst family conditions. Even though she's not clever, agreeing to this suits my preferences. After a moment of contemplation, Park Jimin replied, If that's the case, then I accept. Unexpectedly, a familiar ringtone echoed. The girl he didn't want to see hurt, learning how to love tenderly like his love, so the young man answered the phone. On the other end, his friend spoke loudly, Jimin, gather in the evening. Moonlit bar, take a break and have dinner with us. Okay, no more issues. I'll be there soon. After ending the call, Park Jimin turned to Kim Jenny and said, Kim Jenny, tonight my roommates and I are having dinner. Come with me. Excitedly, Kim Jenny responded, Really? That's wonderful. Kim Jenny's favorability increased by one point and she felt as if she had won the lottery. Park Jimin misses bringing me into his private circle with me in his heart. The current favorability score announced by the system was 96 points, and the host received a reinforcement of 10 points. At this moment, the young man took the opportunity to think, 
Kim Jenny is not a simple girl. It seems there's a big fish in this pond. I want to see how much she can stir up this murky water, but don't let me down, Senior Kim Jenny. Kim Jenny took advantage of the time to reapply some blush, adding radiance to her appearance. In another scene, inside a taxi, Park Min Young thought to herself, What should I do? Park Jimin gave her such an expensive car. Later, she sighed with a hint of frustration. But I don't even have a driver's license. Simultaneously, the taxi driver turned and said, This is where you said, the fare is 24 yuan, you can scan the code. Oh, wait a moment, let me scan. As she raised her phone to scan the code, Park Min Young noticed a familiar figure walking with another girl. Isn't that Park Jimin? And that girl is? After a while, Min Young recognized. That's the famous beauty from the Art Academy, and they are together. Seeing Park Jimin leaving, Min Young turned to the taxi driver waiting for payment. Driver, help me follow the car in front. I'll pay double the fare, pay it all at once, okay. The driver quickly followed the car in front. At this moment, Min Young thought to herself, my sixth sense is telling me something is definitely happening. As Park Min Young was contemplating dark thoughts, when she saw Park Jimin arriving at the restaurant, she expressed a bit of surprise. I thought we were going to a hotel or something, but it's just for a meal. Noticing Min Young's unusual behavior of not scanning the payment code for the taxi fare, the worried taxi driver sweated and asked, Uh, can the beauty pay for the fare? Only when called did Min Young startle. I'm sorry, driver, let me scan the code. Then, she got out of the taxi and followed Park Jimin, thinking, I want to see what Park Jimin is up to. Upon Jimin's arrival, his friends discussed, Jimin, you're here. The girl behind you looks familiar. Seeing the beautiful girl holding hands with Park Jimin, they exclaimed, Indeed, she looks very familiar. After a while, one of them realized, Green beans, isn't this the beauty Kim Jenny? Jimin, you sly fox, how come there are so many beautiful girls around you? Seeing his friends waiting for him for quite some time, and with a girl by his side, Park Jimin politely spoke, Sorry for being late, Kim Jenny. These are my roommates. You might have met them before. His friends then took the initiative to introduce themselves. The one in the middle spoke first. I'm Lee. The bespectacled one said, I'm Gil. The chubby one waved two fingers and said, I'm Ho. Let me introduce you to Kim Jenny. Part Jimin hadn't finished his sentence when Mr. Hu interrupted, saying, Don't introduce anymore. Even if she transforms, I can still recognize her. Hearing his friend about to speak some nonsense, Mr. Lee immediately pressed Mr. Hu's head down, saying, Mr. Hu, what are you saying? Your intention is obvious. Who wouldn't recognize the beauty Kim Jenny? Ha 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 ha. Meanwhile, Mr. Gill appeared serious, as if a rival was trying to steal his girl. So what's the relationship between you two now? He asked. Seeing Mr. Gill being too serious, both Park Jimin and Kim Jenny were a bit stunned, and the other two friends turned their eyes to Mr. Gill. Kim Jenny mumbled, What kind of relationship? I don't know either. Maybe I am pursuing Park Jimin, but he hasn't agreed yet. Someone has even gifted him a house, and he's still considering. It's tough for me. Upon hearing this, the three friends were shocked and couldn't believe it. True or false? A house as a gift, and the beauty is pursuing Park Jimin. Not only that, but also giving a house. Jimin's determination is frightening. Even online novels wouldn't dare to write such a plot. What kind of demonic charisma does he have? Unexpectedly, a coffee cup spilled, the table next to them, and the whole Park Jimin group jumped. At the adjacent table, Park Min Young, hearing that Kim Jenny had given a house to Park Jimin, was startled and accidentally spilled her coffee. She thought to herself, it won't be discovered, right? Giving a house. This girl gave Park Jimin a house like that. Now thinking back, Park Jimin has done a lot for me, and it seems I haven't repaid him for anything. If I continue like this, Park Jimin's impression of me will decline day by day, and she will gradually gain the upper hand. Park Min Young could vividly imagine the graph of Park Jimin's impression of her plummeting uncontrollably. Meanwhile, Park Min Young's impression of Kim Jenny skyrocketed. No, this girl is a love rival. I must quickly inform my sisters. Park Min Young immediately messaged in the group chat. Park Jimin, having dinner with a girl named Kim Jenny at the Moonlight Bar. It seems Kim Jenny gave Park Jimin a house. After reading this message, both Kim Jisoo and Jun Sun Sun asked with curiosity. Yang Wibai replied promptly. 
Is it the Moonlight Bar? I'm on my way. Wait for me. After a satisfying meal, with all the food and drinks consumed on the table, the group called the server for the bill. A waitress approached, greeted them, and pointed towards Kim Jenny, saying, Your bill. This beautiful lady has already settled it. While Kim Jenny smiled, the entire group focused their attention on her. Kim Jenny, why did you? Kim Jenny spoke up. I'm glad to meet you all today. It's just a meal. No need to worry. Feeling awkward about letting the girl pay, young part Jimin said, Why let it be like this? I'll transfer the money. Kim Jenny replied, Absolutely not. How can you be so stingy? Jimin, didn't you also give me a few bags as gifts? Inviting you all for a meal is nothing. My internet cafe still has work. Go ahead. Bye-bye. Observing Kim Jenny's expressions and sharpness, Part Jimin whispered to himself, Indeed, a skilled player is different. Taking a step back as a move forward, Kim Jenny has strategies, but they don't make people hate her. His friend remarked to Part Jimin, Kid, you're really fortunate. As everyone left, Part Min Young marveled in admiration. Truly impressive, she's indeed a love rival. It's challenging to learn this kind of manipulation. If her status in my mind was an A before, now I can easily reach an S Jimin. Your skills in pursuing girls can truly be passed on to others. Park Jimin quickly responded, I dare to teach this, but you wouldn't dare to learn. Stop kidding, Jimin. Kim Jenny's reputation at school wasn't great before. People said she was promiscuous and had a chaotic personal life, but after getting to know her, I find her quite open-minded. If you really want to be with her, don't hurt her feelings. The serious young man reassured, Lee, you can trust me. Amused, Part Jimin added, I'm not the promiscuous type, who knows you might be. You're even more promiscuous. Suddenly, the young man spotted a familiar figure. It's Hyun Jin Ryu. He's also here for a meal. Hyun Jin Ryu and his friends approached, and the whole group passed by each other without acknowledging anyone. Hyun Jin Ryu thought to himself, Part Jimin may not know he's stirring up trouble, thinking too much and getting a headache. Ha 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 ha. Too amusing. Unexpectedly, a luxury car pulled up. The group gasped. Rolls-Royce Phantom. Worth over nine million. And we can encounter it in reality. Am I dreaming? Yang Wibai stepped out of the Rolls-Royce Phantom. And Hyun Jin Ryu's eyes widened. It's Yang Wibai. Why is she here? Seeing Yang Wibai quickly approaching Park Jimin, Hyun Jin Ryu thought, Is she here to settle scores with Park Jimin? Some interesting drama to watch. He. Surprisingly, Yang Wibai ran up and hugged Park Jimin tightly. I was wrong. Please forgive me. Yang Wibai looked at Park Jimin with her pitiful eyes and pleaded, I've already deleted that person's wet chat. Please forgive me this time. Park Jimin's three roommates couldn't help but exclaim, truly a glutton, never running out of options. The three friends admired, oh my, what background does this kid have? Not only did he win Chum Fu Mei's heart, but he also obediently conquered Chum Fu Mai. A master indeed. Hyun Jin Ryu, seeing his goddess Yang Wibai in such a pitiful state, couldn't bear it and muttered to himself, Why is it like this? Contrary to what I thought, my goddess looks like a simp lord. Park Jimin calmly responded to Yang Wibai, You're not wrong. He raised his hand, pointing to the car nearby, delivering words that hurt Yang Wibai's heart. We, in fact, have no special relationship. I have no right to interfere with your freedom to make friends. Upon hearing Park Jimin's words, Yang Wibai immediately explained about the incident that day. It's not like that. That day, I went to the car exhibition to choose a gift for you. I don't know why things turned out like that. Apart from the cars you bought, the most expensive one is the Rolls-Royce Phantom. Then, Yang Wibai handed the car keys to Park Jimin. Her purpose in coming here today was to give this car to Park Jimin. Of course, she hoped he could understand and give her a chance to start over. She looked at Park Jimin with an extremely pitiful gaze, continuously pleading, hoping he could accept her apology. I know you don't care about money, but this is my way of apologizing. Will you accept it? Park Jimin remained indifferent, no longer concerned about Yang Guibai's emotions. Her words at this moment only brought a sense of weariness to him. Witnessing this scene, Hyun Jin Ryu's heart felt like it was burning, and his heart began to shatter. Why? Why is it like this? I've invested so much, 
and you still want to cling to him. I love you like this, and you never bother to look at me. Park Jimin held the keys in his hand, silently thinking. Yang Wei Bai, even with the understanding of having to let go, still retains the demeanor of a spoiled princess, making progress. After pondering, Park Jimin turned to Yang Wei Bai and said, Thank you for your gift. Unfortunately, I no longer believe in love. I won't cut down a forest for you. You also have to accept reality. I've taken the car. I just don't want to put you in an awkward situation. Park Min Young had been spying on Park Jimin for half a day, planning to leave when suddenly he called her name. Park Min Young, sneaking around for half a day. Come over here. I'll take you for a walk. Park Jimin's unexpected move left everyone there surprised. Park Min Young frowned, not understanding what Park Jimin was thinking. How can he use Yang Wee Bai's car to take me away right in front of her? Park Jimin's roommates also became puzzled when they heard him call Park Min Young. In their minds, a big question mark appeared. Park Min Young approached the car with an awkward expression. Park Jimin, it's not a good idea. This car was a gift from Miss Tu to you. It would be better to take her for a stroll instead. Park Jimin didn't bother to look at Yang Wee Bai. He opened the car door and said to Park Min Young, If it's a gift to me, then it's mine. I can take whoever I want. Get in the car. Don't waste words. In a forced situation, Park Min Young had no choice but to obey Park Jimin and got into the car. She grumbled as she stepped in. Fine. I'm sitting. No need to be aggressive. Park Jimin accelerated the car, not bothering to say a word to Yang Wibai, leaving behind a trail of dusty smoke. Hyun Jin Ryu felt sorry for the girl inside. Yang Wibai, don't be sad anymore. Park Jimin, that guy is just playing around. He doesn't have any real feelings. You gave him a car, and he threw you on the side of the road to take a stroll with someone else. He's just heartless. In response to Hyun Jin Ryu's comments, Yang Wibai felt even more irritated. Hyun Jin Ryu, do you think speaking ill of Park Jimin will save you? You don't understand how much Park Jimin has done for me. Hyun Jin Ryu tried to explain, No, Yang Wibai. I just want what's best for you. Yang Weibai, abandoned by the guy, and now being lectured by Hyun Jin Ryu, became extremely annoyed, and snapped, Yang Weibai, what's that? Can't you just call me by my name? My relationship with Park Jimin is none of your business. Even if he's playing around, it's my business. At this moment, Yang Weibai felt, Park Jimin, this is his way of teasing me. It shows he's still paying attention to me. I need to seize this opportunity even more. Sitting in the car, Park Min Young still felt uneasy. She found Park Jimin's actions perplexing. It was the first time she had seen his unbelievably indifferent expression. Despite numerous instances of her playing pranks on him, Park Jimin had never paid her much attention before. After waiting for the young man to cool off a bit, she asked, Park Jimin, why do you treat Yang Wibai like that? Park Jimin coldly replied, No reason. Maybe she didn't live up to my expectations. A bit disappointing. That's all. The one at fault may not be her, but me. Park Min Young also knew quite a bit about Park Jimin and Yang Wee Bai's relationship, both being women. She felt some sympathy for Yang Wee Bai. Park Min Young raised her hand to gently touch her hair and then looked at Park Jimin with a probing gaze. Even though I don't know what happened, you still pay attention to her. You two are third year friends. Isn't she your first love? Park Jimin, who had basically lost faith in romantic relationships, responded indifferently. A person like me doesn't have a first love. Hearing this, Park Min Young raised an eyebrow, displaying a skeptical attitude. Only a devil would believe you. Oh man. Park Jimin snorted and calmly retorted. Humph. Woman. As he turned away, something flashed in Park Min Young's mind, and she suddenly remembered something. Right, Park Jimin. I have another question for you. You must seriously think about it and give me a sincere answer. Hearing Park Min Young's serious tone, Park Jimin looked at her intently. Go ahead and ask. Why do you want to give me a 1 billion cart technology stake? What do you have in mind? At this point, Park Jimin leaned close to Park Min Young's face, his gaze becoming deep and unpredictable. Do you want to hear the truth, or do you prefer lies? Park Min Young tightened her grip on the table, affirming, you, I told you to be serious. Feeling that the joke was over, Park Jimin turned his face back to its original position. He drove and answered with an indifferent look, I have no intentions toward you. 
giving you the stake is just to take advantage of your favor. Park Min Young felt a bit disheartened, though she couldn't confirm Park Jimin's feelings for her. She didn't expect him to answer so decisively without any hesitation. Summoning the last bit of courage as a girl, she said to him, I don't believe you have no intentions toward me. Why do you want my favor? Park Jimin no longer hid anything. He spoke plainly, making Park Min Young understand that he needed her favor to accomplish a mission. Hearing the words, mission, Park Min Young exclaimed in surprise, mission. Suddenly slamming on the brakes, Park Jimin caused Park Min Young to jerk forward. After pulling the car to the side, Park Jimin continued to explain his mission. That's right. I have a system that gives me 90 billion. I can spend it however I want, but only on girls. You are one of my targets, and this billion is just a small gesture. Upon hearing this, Park Min Young's expression changed instantly, finding Park Jimin's words utterly absurd. Such things don't happen in real life, she thought. Park Min Young believed that the guy was making up a story. Park Jimin, can you please stop joking? Even if you're making up a story, make it somewhat believable. A system mission or whatever, you won't find that in online novels. Seeing that Park Min Young remained unconvinced even after his elaborate explanation, Park Jimin switched to a story he had secretly contemplated for a while. All right, I admit I spend money on you because you're beautiful. My goal is to trick you into bed. Are you satisfied? Upon hearing Park Jimin's response, Park Min Young involuntarily clenched her fists at her sides, stunned by his audacity. Trick, trick me into bed. Considering Park Jimin's current situation and what he had provided for her, the idea of ending up in bed with him was entirely plausible. Park Min Young recognized this and muttered to herself, If it's Park Jimin, maybe it's not so bad. At this thought, Park Min Young's cheeks suddenly turned as red as tomatoes, while Park Jimin felt a bit annoyed. He rested his hand on his forehead, muttering, I remember this sister used to be different, reserved and quiet. Why does she act like a curious child now? Is this some kind of contrast? Park Jimin took Park Min Young back to her residence in the small villa area, looking down from above. Park Min Young observed Park Jimin driving away and remarked, This Park Jimin, always eloquent, but never seen him lift a finger or take a step, quite strange. If he genuinely wants to trick me into bed, there are plenty of opportunities. Besides, he has enough money to attract countless other girls. After analyzing for a while, Park Min Young still thought to herself, I still feel Park Jimin's purpose is not simple, could it be? As she was still pondering, Yang Weibai called, Hello Yang Weibai, oh, Park Jimin, he's back. Yang Weibai anxiously asked, Miss Park, I have an unreasonable request, if you don't mind, can you let me know? Park Jimin, did he say anything about me? Park Min Young replied, I asked about that but it seems he doesn't want to talk about it. I didn't dare to inquire further, and yes, there seems to be something I can't quite understand. Yang Wibi asked, What is it? Park Min Young explained, I want to know why Park Jimin is investing in goldfish technology and giving me shares. He says it's because he wants to have my favor, but I always feel that this reason is not quite genuine. I also don't feel like I'm worth a billion. You mentioned something similar, and Park Jimin told me the same thing but I also feel that his gains and the price he pays are completely disproportionate. It's too unusual. Yang Wei Bai analyzed, Could it be that he's playing a very large game, since he crazily spent money on the Livestream app, enhanced the reputation of Chairman Bakyun? He has been cautious every step of the way. First, investing in a supermarket, acquiring Big Cat TV, investing in Goldfish Technology Company, appearing like a loser, but in reality, it's a strategic plan and a thousand-mile victory. Park Min Young agreed with Yang Wei Bai's analysis, saying, Exactly, our goldfish technology has developed a new intelligent algorithm from the research department some time ago. Is it possible that Park Jimin invested because he saw this potential? That's right, this is the initial form in which Park Jimin created a business map for himself. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. If you enjoyed the content, please don't hesitate to hit the like and share buttons. Your support is a huge motivation for me to continue creating more videos. Additionally, there are many other interesting story videos on my channel, so feel free to check them out. Thank you.